Canadian mayors from awesome communities across the country are coming together for a fun and informative competition that I'm hosting called the Bring Your A-Game Quiz Show, presented by Canada's Top Mayor Awards. I'm Adam Grow, the Cash Cab Guy, and together we're raising money for Food Banks Canada, a national charitable organization dedicated to helping Canadians living with food insecurity. The trivia questions are general knowledge and pop culture inspired by the cities, towns, and communities and stories shared in advance by the mayors who are on each episode. You can play along and test your knowledge as we're putting the spotlight on people and places who are enriching the lives of Canadians. This episode of the Bring Your A-Game Quiz Show is sponsored by Taylor Media Promotions, getting local businesses found and clean green naturally. All-purpose environmental enzymes available at lifesquad.com. All of the communities featured on this show are on the land of the original people of Turtle Island, the Ungwe Hongwe. And much like First Nations, Inuit and Métis people long before us, who came together with community leaders to learn from them and inspire others, I acknowledge and I'm thankful for the opportunity to do the very same thing on these lands right now. It's time to meet the mayors on this episode of the Bring Your A-Game Quiz Show. Iqaluit Nunavut on Baffin Island is known for its ice-capped mountains and tundra valleys. Rich in Inuit culture, it's home uh, to many artists, filmmakers, and musicians, and there's a strong year-long cultural tradition of enjoying a variety of outdoor activities. Please welcome His Worship Mayor Kenny Bell. Hi, hi Adam, thank you. <laughs> Barrie, Ontario is located on the shores of Kempenfelt Bay on Lake Simcoe in central Ontario with great hiking trails and other outdoor activities, as well as a thriving theater scene. One of Canada's fastest growing and dynamic cities, its heritage downtown helps maintain a community-minded small town feeling with modern urban conveniences. Please welcome His Worship Mayor, Jeff Lehman. Hi, Adam. Uh, we are a Four Seasons playground, but for now, we'll all stay home and play some trivia. Inuvik Northwest Territories is 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle on the beautiful and vast Mackenzie Delta. Offering the comforts of urban living in an Arctic setting, the town connects smaller communities and thrives on the land, nature, and culture as it is the traditional land of the Inuvialuit, Gwich'in, and Métis people. Please welcome Her Worship, Mayor Natasha Kulikowski. Hi, Adam. Thanks for having me. And Yarmouth, Nova Scotia on the Bay of Fundy is quiet and peaceful, yet full of adventure, Acadian culture, and a storied seafaring past. The food and music are fresh and local. It's part of North America's first starlight destination, Acadian skies and Micmac lands. Please welcome Her Worship, Mayor Pam Mood. Hi, Adam. <laughs> How are you out there on the, on the Atlantic side of everything? A1, as always, banana belt here. We're loving it. So there they all are, the mayors on this episode of the Bring Your A-Game Quiz Show. Oh, this is going to be exciting. So let's start with you, Mayor Mood, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, an amazing community, also known for the spirit of the Y-Town Quarantine Challenge. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh gosh, really excited about the quarantine challenge. So obviously when we get thrown into COVID and we have to quarantine, we're separated. Well, you know, we're just a bunch of huggers down here on the East Coast. So we like to keep in connection with each other. So my deputy mayor, Steve Barry, uh, basically set up a quarantine challenge on social media and um, it covers everything from, you know, challenging to serve meals to people in need. Uh, you know, there's just, any number of things and, and it brought people together. Everybody feels a little bit more connected. They had singing contests. I could show you some, but we don't have time and that I charge <laughs> you for that. So yeah, it was just an amazing, uh, amazing thing to do. So famous for the Y Town Quarantine Challenge and also famous internationally for the fact that this psychological thriller was filmed on location there in Yarmouth. Here's the question. In the 2019 movie, The Lighthouse, filmed in Yarmouth, Willem Dafoe's character gives the sea curse to Robert Pattinson's character because he doesn't like what meal he cooked. What are the multiple choice options in that mayor mood? Okay, is it A, lobster? That's me drooling because I love my lobster. <laughs> <laughs> is it the Acadian dish rapi pie? Or is it pizza with pineapple? Pizza with... 
I don't know what anybody else was thinking, but uh, this is not the actual lighthouse from the film. This is this is a real lighthouse in the community. Is am I right? Yes, yes. It's the Cape for Shoe Lighthouse. <laughs> so, what are mayors thinking? Is it the lobster? Is it the whatever pie she said? Or oh my <laughs> goodness, forbid! I'm, I'm guessing pizza. it has to be lobster. I would say lobster. <laughs> You are correct. <laughs> Pizza with pineapple is wonderful. And I'll take on anybody out there. I know this is controversial, but it's a Canadian invention. It has nothing to do with Hawaii, but it's wonderful. Well, that makes sense to go to you, Mayor Lehman, because we're talking about food and the very controversial butter tart rivalry. Mm. Tell us a little bit about the passion of butter tarts in the Barrie area. Well, it is uh, widely agreed that butter tarts are both Canadian and had their origin in central Ontario, but several of us towns in central Ontario lay claim to being the home of the butter tart. There are festivals, there are trails. Uh, it is a sweet treat in many of our, uh, our, our towns and cities. We have documentary evidence, Adam, and that is from a Royal Victoria Hospital cookbook the Women's Auxiliary of the RVH, which is more than 100 years old, wonderful volunteer organization, they had a butter tart recipe back in oh, 1908 or early, 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 early years of the uh, 20th century. And it is the earliest known recipe. So Barry can legitimately, with documentary evidence, I might add, <laughs> they claim to being the home of the butter tart. Fair enough. Inspiring this question, published in that very book, in the 1900s, the Women's Auxiliary of the Royal Victoria Hospital Cookbook. It contains the first documented recipe for butter tarts, which included what fruit that is toxic to dogs? Okay, uh, which fruit that is toxic to dogs? Is it A, raisins, B, currants, or C, durian? Currants, raisins, Durian, actually in the other order. Raisins are A, currants are B, <laughs> durian is C. Is it A, B, or C? You made us more confused now. <laughs> yeah. You have a future as a game oh, show host. That was pretty good. <laughs> and a survey says? <laughs> and Mayors, your, your response is to go get which one of those you think is the correct answer. Which one is it? Because I know you're all growing durian in your gardens right now. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Those are either raisins or currants. Which one? Either, in fact, little raisins or big currants. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, the correct you answer being currants. Currents. Currents, that's right. Believe it or not, a lot of people would have guessed raisins to that. And then, of course, there is the other controversy, which is do butter tarts have nuts in them? Another oh. whole hour, Adam. We don't have time for that competition. <laughs> but I do want to bring us back to another competition. There's all sorts of things that happen in your community. The Inuvik Sunrise Festival, National Indigenous Peoples Day, the Great Northern Arts Festival. And what summit? Yeah, so it's the Northern and Dene Games Summit. It's uh, a, comp uh, a sports competition, basically, that students from across our area participate in. Uh, it happens every year. Um, this year, actually, they've modified for COVID, so each school uh, who is participating will be doing their activities from their home school, and it will be um, broadcast online. So that's a really uh, fun pivot that they've come up with. And so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity for students to learn from elders and other community members, and then to also have competition amongst themselves. So as part of those games, one of the competitions that leapt out at me was the blanket toss game, which is based on Arctic Circle rituals. Uh, and this particular ritual is in um, gaining altitude, which helped the hunters spot what across the terrain. So, were you getting altitude to help hunters see game out on the land, holes in the ice, or the nearest Tim Hortons? <laughs> I love the comedy. I love it. Well, it's Canada. There's a Tim Hortons every 400 feet, so I don't know that you need altitude. <laughs> yeah, they probably don't need to go this high, but this is what it looks like. This, <laughs> this is a, 
um, this is one of the, um, the the competitions. I guess I guess it is scored on merits of creative talent or just purely height. <laughs> It's actually probably not one that's scored. It's uh, a demonstrative one for sure, but you can see how involved uh, any of the spectators do get in it. So I don't know. I think we go with game. It's got to be to. It's got to be to see game, hunting game, G game for sure. Nice. Right on. <laughs> well, this is still in the spirit of games and a competition. Uh, as we go to a Calouet, Mayor uh, uh, Bell, um, you got the largest Inuit population in Canada, and. So Inuit throw singing is, is less of a form of music, although people do enjoy it for its musical entertainment, I guess, and cultural richness, but it's more of a game. Yeah, absolutely. So throat singing is one of the most uh, amazing um, games and uh, competitions that uh, Inuit women, typically Inuit women, uh, partake in. Uh, so they, they, they use their throats to go back and forth, and, um, you know, it... it uh, it's it's pretty magical to watch. Which inspired this question. In Inuit vocal games, typically two women do compete facing each other. And while judged on endurance and quality of the sounds, the game stops when one of the two women runs out of breath or what? Is it A, laughs, B, blinks, or C, burps? <laughs> You have to show me what you think it is. Which one do you think it is? <laughs> well, I just showed you. I'm laughing my head off, too. <laughs> I think Pam gets the Oscar for laughter. <laughs> what we call the Bay of Fundy chuckle. <laughs> Did I just make coffee come out your nose? <laughs> Well, instead of the Bay of Funny, we're going to go to Kempenfeld Bay for this question. So I'm sure if you're not already familiar with Kempenfeld, Kelly, once you're elected, there's a crash course. Is it something that you need to become familiar with, Mayor Lehman? Uh, absolutely, if for no other reason than a lot of mascots are Kempenfeld, Kelly, in this part of the world. So we got to know what we're talking about. Well, in Canadian folklore, there is Kempenfeld, Kelly, or Igopogo, in Lake Simcoe, Ogopogo, in Okanagan Lake, in British Columbia, and what long-bodied creature with a sheep-like head believed to inhabit Lake Manitoba? So your options on this one, Mayors, are A, Winnie Pogo, B, Pogo Toba, or C, Manny Pogo. That's Winnie Pogo, Pogi Toba, or Manny Pogo. <laughs> <laughs> you should get points just for remembering those options. That was a lot of go-go. <laughs> that was a lot of go-go, yeah. <laughs> While you're thinking, Mares, there's uh, Kempenfeld Bay right now. Beautiful shot. I don't know oh. if anybody can see uh, if Kempenfeld yeah. Kelly is in the shot or not. <laughs> it's slowly swimming under the sailboat. Uh -huh. <laughs> is that facing south or south? That is facing southwest, and the tower you can see in the background is a thousand-foot-tall TV tower from back oh. when we broadcast television from tall towers. <laughs> well, I think the answer might be Loch Nestoba. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Survey says. I'm out. How about so, Manitoba? Manny Pogo, Manny Pogo, however Manny that Pogo. was pronounced. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Manny Pogo. There uh -huh. you go. So I'm not sure if there's any creatures looming underneath ice highways, but I wanted to bring the focus <laughs> back to something uh, that is definitely an iconic Canadian thing. Uh, the Dempster Highway is the beginning of the Inuvik Tuktoyaktuk Highway that leads to the Arctic Ocean. Tell us a little bit about how important that is to your region, Mayor Kulikowski. Absolutely. So the Dempster Highway is approximately 800 kilometers long. Um, it connects us to our to down south and it is our transportation route. Um, and when you drive the Dempster, it's full of beautiful scenery, many different types of landscape. Uh, and it brings you right to Inuvik, where once you pass through Inuvik, then you begin to travel down the Inuvik Tuktoyaktuk Highway, which was just opened in 2017. And it brings you right to the edge of the Beaufort Sea in the Arctic Ocean. Uh, it connects uh, Canada from coast to coast to coast. 
Well, in sections of the Inuvik Tuktoyuktuk Highway that leads to the Arctic Ocean, you can step onto the thick marbled ice and see little round markings that are frozen what? But they're probably not monsters. Frozen something <laughs> else. So, mayors, your options are bubbles, loonies that were left there during freeze-up, or beluga whale droppings. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yeah, well, people are always leaving, uh, you know, dog droppings out on roads and parks and things. Maybe that's the uh, the and the Northern Territories, <laughs> Northwestern Territories equivalent. Got to go with bubbles, though. It's got to be bubbles. That's got to be a natural phenomenon. Right? Let's, go with, let's go with bubbles. Bubbles, it is. Just you in case, correct. beluga whale droppings. There they oh. are. <laughs> Wait, Very me. small beluga <laughs> whale. My multi-purpose artwork. I was going to say. <laughs> you can't have one drawing that is, is, is the answer to <laughs> all of my questions. Oddly enough, that's also what Tempest Bell Kelly looks like. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So from a long stretch of highway to a long stretch of beach, one of the popular beaches in the Yarmouth area is a great location to see that beautiful sky that's provided by one of North America's first starlight destinations, Acadian Skies and Micmac Lands. I'm talking about Port Maitland Beach. Is this a place that you frequent with your family or is it just kind of only for the tourists? No. Oh, it's for everybody. It's for everybody. And the beach is big enough and our population is small enough that no matter when you go on the beach, you don't have to bump into people. So it's great for COVID, I have to say. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah, so we can see it's, there's a lot of space for uh, spacing out here. So it must be like, you know, it could be renamed COVID Beach of Nova Scotia. <laughs> it's important to note that we have on the Bay of Fundy the highest tides in the entire world. So you can go in the morning and it's, you know, clear beach or as far as you can see. And then you can come a few hours later and you're walking on the rocks. So it's pretty neat. Amazing. Well, it's a beautiful long stretch of beach, but the longest is at 150 kilometers. The natural sea beach that has the world's longest record is Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh, which is a country known for what striped animal? Was it the A, Bengal tiger, B, zebra, or C, you know, skunk? <laughs> and mayors, you have to you make the sound. The you have to make the sound of what you think it is. Oh, great. <laughs> Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> From the skies where you can see natural things to things that are man-made, let's talk about the Airbus 380 and how it's important to the skies around the world, but particularly to Iqaluit Mayor Bell. Yeah, for sure. So we have, um, we've been known for a cold weather destination and uh, the Airbus 380 came to Iqaluit for uh, testing prior to being allowed to uh, fly properly. So the Airbus 380 is the only commercial plane that allows passengers to do what in flight? Your options are uh, take a shower, uh, A, B, uh, lay down uh, sleeping flat, or C, uh, get a pillow. The only commercial aircraft allows you get an extra pillow. I like that. That'd be a good feature. It's the, it's the only one left. I mean, they keep taking stuff away. It is literally the only one left that gives extra pillow. But, Mayors, you have to show me what you think the answer is. Is it take a shower, get an extra pillow, or sleep laying completely flat? <laughs> It's the zombie oh. apocalypse. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to yeah. go with this one. <laughs> it's almost as yes. cold in, <laughs> in that flight as it is in, in Inuvik. That's, that's right. Oh. The only oh. one where you can cryogenically sleep through the entire flight. No, it's, it's take a shower, take a shower. <laughs> So it looked cold on that flight, as cold as it might be in uh, Inuvik. The Inuvialuit drummers and dancers can keep you warm in terms of movement and culture. So tell us a bit more about that, Mayor Kulikowski. 
Absolutely. So the Inuvi Alawit drummers and dancers are a intergenerational group. Um, they probably run from elders who are in their 80s and 90s right down to children who are two and three years old. Um, and they uh, take traditional dancing and drumming and bring it to the world. Um, it was a, one of the arts that was somewhat lost during our residential school history here in Canada. And in the mid 1980s, a group of elders came together and started to bring back this uh, important part of Inuvaluit culture. And it has continued to grow and continues to be a strong part of our community and the culture of the Indigenous people who live here. At traditional Inuvialuit feasts, the first to be seated, first to be served, and first to dance are whom? All right, mayors, and your options here are A, the elders, B, all the single ladies, or C, the matriarchs. <laughs> I love the extra jazz hand. That was great. <laughs> that was jazz my fiance. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to go with elders. Yeah. yeah Definitely that. elders. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So that has to do with respect and courtesy and kindness. So that leads me back to Barry and for a chance for you to describe Mayor Lehman, Barry Families Unite, the Facebook page. So Barry Families Unite started uh, as a response to COVID in one of the very first days of COVID, um, a, a woman in Barry started a page for people to connect to other people who needed help. Everything from delivering groceries to picking up a prescription a uh, little bit of help uh, shoveling their driveway at that time. It was still March. Uh, and that group, which started with a few hundred people in the first few days, ballooned to over 12,000 members now. So almost uh, one in 10 people in my community is a member of this group. Uh, and they have literally fulfilled thousands of uh, call them service requests. They, they have a whole team of administrators now whole series of rules, sub pages and everything. You know, this is something I really hope we hold on to after COVID, that sense of helping one another out and that strong sense of community, even if we're connecting online now more, uh, more than ever. Well, it led to this question from a movie, the 2007 movie, Evan Almighty, when God tells Evan to change the world by doing one act of random kindness at a time with letters in the phrase being a hint for him to build what? Okay, mayors, your options here are A, a dam, B, a Facebook page, or C, an ark. Definitely <laughs> an ark. I would say the same. <laughs> it is in fact an ark. Well, you got to look at you got to look at the questions in particular. The it's the words. How did he? Uh, Morgan Freeman's character actually used a stick to draw them in the sand. How did he come up? How was it a hint for him to build an arc? The A-R-K, an act, act of random kindness. Act of random, that's right. An A-R-K. <laughs> isn't, isn't, that like how, that's, isn't that how you say arc in like maritime? Air. 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 That's all right. I'm so yeah. proud of you, Mayor. I want you to build an air. You, Mayor Mood, you are welcome to do any Barry accents you want yeah. to do right now. It's kind of like Fargo mixed with Toronto. So being kind is a kind of spiritual commitment to ourselves and our community. Uh, something else that had spiritual significance is what... Uh, First Nations uh, culturally and otherwise thought the Northern Lights were. So tell us a little bit about how Aurora Borealis is important in your part of the world, Mayor Bell. Yeah, for sure. The, so uh, a lot of people look at uh, the Northern Lights here as um, very culturally cultural. There are uh, cultural similarities with uh, games. Um, you know, if you whistle at them, if you... Uh, uh, you snap your fingers. There's a whole bunch of different uh, child uh, games behind it, but it's uh, it's quite amazing to see. So Aurora Borealis, often called Northern Lights or more uh, traditionally Ascarnit, it's enjoyed in Iqaluit from October to April. Does it always look exactly like this or does it kind of vary on different conditions? Oh, absolutely varies. Uh, sometimes it's, it's green like this, but sometimes it's uh, multicolored and it, it, it spirals around the sky and you can see p uh, pinks, purples, uh, greens, blues. It's, uh, it's amazing. Almost every single time it's something new. So according to Travel None of It, Inuit legend, 
reported there, the Northern Lights, Ascarnit, are ancestral spirits playing what sport with the skull of a walrus? Mm. <laughs> okay, mayors, your options are pickleball, soccer, or lacrosse. And you have to show me, mayors, which one you think it is. <laughs> well, I do that for the but i don't think so i think it's i'm gonna stand up here and kick something there we go there you go, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like that. that looked like soccer to me that's yeah uh, that was a pretty good action there <laughs> let's say soccer <laughs> so from legends in the sky to more of an earth-based mortal <laughs> legend it's back to the community of yarmouth mayor mood it's the legendary story about the Christmas Carol, it's beginning to look a lot like mm. Christmas. Tell us about that. So, yes. So it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas was written here, so I'm told, right in Yarmouth at the Grand Hotel by Meredith Wilson. Um, he was staying here and he wrote that Carol and it's famous, of course, which makes us famous too. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Johnny Mathis version of It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas was featured in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, known for having what famous New Yorkers cameo edited out? So your options are Carrie Bradshaw, Rudy Giuliani, or Donald Trump. Can we edit out Rudy Giuliani yeah. anyway? Yeah. Like just from everything, <laughs> everything you've ever them, yeah. <laughs> so we have Trump. To go with Trump. Trump. Yeah, that was Trump. <laughs> but for the bonus points, Mayors, you have to do your best Johnny Mathis oh, impression singing that Christmas carol to take us out. Go for oh. it. It's, it's beginning, beginning to look, to look beginning a lot like, like Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Everywhere you go. You go. <laughs> Who knows the you, thing? I don't know. <laughs> it sounds that's much it, better with that point point So thank you so much, Mayors. You were fantastic sports. Really appreciate you bringing your A-game to this episode. Thank, thank you, Adam. You. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> thank you so much, Adam. Always presented by Canada's top mayor award, the Bring Your A-Game Quiz Show is in support of Food Banks Canada, raising money and awareness for this national charitable organization dedicated to serving Canadians living with food insecurity. This episode of the Bring Your A-Game Quiz Show is sponsored by Taylor Media Promotions, getting local businesses found and clean green naturally, all-purpose environmental enzymes available at lifesquad.com. You can donate to Food Banks Canada at bringyouragame.ca in a second browser window, or use your mobile phone and scan the QR code on the screen. We are a people of passion in a land so wonderfully free. Where we belong, where we'll grow strong on the shout out to our men.